Welcome to Tier Lists with Solemn here at the Solemn Vanguard channel. This time post GBT12. This means we are not blindly going to be watching what happened in spring because obviously a lot of things happened. We will take it into account, but overall um, we really got to watch what's relevant. So a little note beforehand, tier lists aren't set in stone. Lots of people dislike the uh, ID behind tier lists for this very reason. This is just a guide to show you which decks are doing well, which decks are trash, and which decks are sleeper decks ready to take a tournament by storm against all odds. Yes, you might place a certain deck somewhere else and that's totally fine. This video just wants to give a general ID. I also won't include every single subclan of every single clan, so sorry for that. Sponsored by Royalty Playmat is Designs, the perfect way to get a custom and exclusively for you design for your Vanguard playmats. Choose your units, choose some or no zones, choose a tagline, a team name, the name of your bunny. Anything your heart desires at Royalty Playmat Designs. We will divide uh, in tiers of 1, 1 1.5, 2 and 3. 1 being the dominant meta decks seen topping regularly. 1.5 being the sleeper decks that still have a chance and can be seen in a top 8 here and there. 2 being decent decks but will generally lose to tier 1. And 3 the decks that really really need some help from Bushi. So starting with tier 1, in no particular order, of course we start with the legend, Gear Chronicle, and right now Zodiac Time Beasts. We really saw these stopping like for the past two years with uh, Time Leap, but since recently they have gotten some support in uh, set 11 and set 12 that really catapulted the Zodiac Time Beast variant to the top. The amount of drawing, the amount of consistency, it's just insane. So really watch out for that deck i think i said in no particular order but this deck really is the best together with the next one battle sisters now this is a huge surprise for most people because oracle think tank has really been tier 3 for ages they've been so bad for so long and now in set 12 bushy gave them some love so battle sisters really gotta watch out it's like a sanctuary guard deck from last year but on steroids it's insane then we have blade wings blade wings is another one of those insane decks that's uh, been topping because of one set of support the war tiger jaeger stride fodder just really add some insane consistency and draw power that they needed and so now they have the otk possibility on the demagogue turn their very first stride and if that fails they can just go into tybalt and turtle the game for so long eventually killing you anyway so yeah blade wings very insane deck then we have blasters um, another really great deck it only took two sets well sets a legend deck and set 11 to really create a tier one amazing deck using lots of drive checks and attacks and fetching it's so consistent with wing all brave as well i also actually have uh, two deck profiles of blade wing and blasters on this channel so if you're interested you can check that out then kagero they have been this odd tier 1.5 to tier 2 deck for quite a while and then now with set 11 they got some sparkles that ziegenberg it's insane and so now they're also uh, up there topping a lot so yeah kagero usually we see blade master topping but there's also people in the us who are like overlord is better so we will just have to see and wait for the results then we also have luard now luard was this amazing tier one deck because of the insane draws you could do with belial owl and our guys here doomed but then it's uh, lost some popularity it seemed and now it's back thanks to set 12 they got a really nice grade 2 that can nuke fields Early on, they got a Helheim, the stride that's actually made for Claret Sword, Rip Claret Sword. And yeah, the deck just got a few boosts and it's really up there now. Then we also have Genesis Wiseman Loop, another deck that is really, really insane. It has this one kill turn with Wiseman and Taro and the Sand Trigger and so forth. And that just makes it insanely deadly. If you're at four damage and they then unleash the wise man loop with ADK and so forth, you're dead. Honorable mentions because Night Rose has been doing a lot in the West for a very long time, but same in Japan, but then suddenly since set 12, we barely see it anymore. And some people are saying this is because Vanquishers actually got support making it like able to 
completely empty a drop zone without any issues. We will just have to wait and see what the actual results are in the coming BCS, the Autumn Circuit. But for now, I'm keeping Nitros in Tier 1 because it's such a great deck, but we have no idea what will happen to it. Because we don't see a lot of Vanquishers either, but maybe it's the fear or maybe it's that so many people have been playing it, no idea. So honorable mention for now, we are also putting Vanquisher in there just to be sure. But it's very possible that one of those decks goes back into tier 1 and the other one in tier 1.5 or something. Going into tier 1.5, again, no particular order, we're gonna start with Nubatama Dominate. Now, the deck itself after GBT11 is kind of eh. And then in set 12, they get this little bit of support and suddenly we saw a few tops in Japan. So I am not sure if this is due to popularity because people just bought up the deck like crazy because of hype, because it's a new keyword and such, or because of inexperience from opponents because it's a new deck. So some people might not know what to do against it. So for now, now tier 1.5, maybe it might be one, maybe it might be two. We will have to wait. Um, next up, Oracle Think Tank in general. They just got quite an extensive boost uh, in set 12 and so we're putting them at 1.5 we might see some insane Susano decks with a new stride that can uh, block G guards and sentinels or we might see some Tsukuyomi or whatever so Oracle Think Tank might be a really interesting sleeper deck then we have Seven Seas Rush even though we have the limit of the beautiful great one it still wasn't enough because we still see a few tops from this in some Japan's Fiji CSs and so Seven Seas Rush is still up there. I think it will take even more uh, limiting before that deck is dead, even though I don't think it's necessary now. It's not as consistent as it used to be. Then we have Spike Brothers OTK, even though it's not an OTK, or the Hell Hard Loop, the GB8. Even though it's a very, very good deck and once they reach the GB8, you are dead. It is not quite as devastating as the other decks because they're only good when they get to GB8 and so it's up there it can still wins but it's not as great as Zodiac Time Beast or anything. Then we have Tachikaze Gaia. I am putting it up there because we actually saw this deck top 8 quite a lot in the spring circuit so consistently it never goes into top 3 but somehow it was in almost every single top 8. Well not every single but like 30% of them and so it's really up there. Then we have Bermuda Triangle Prisms. They were a very good sleeper deck already. They had a good rush. They could run 12 crits then on the first stride they would draw a lot. They really had some closing power as well with the stride and then the break ride on top of that. Um, and now they got some more support so Bermuda Triangle Prisms is definitely up there. I have no experience with Riviere to be honest so I'm not sure if I should put her up here as well so I won't for now. Then we have Link Joker, Messiah and Chaos Breaker Dragon. Both are good decks in their own way. Chaos Breaker Dragon really misses some closing power, whereas Messiah misses some of that really devastating locking. And so it's not tier 1, but I'll put it at 1.5 for now. Then we have Nova Grappler Victor. It's a very good deck, but when it doesn't get rear guards, it dies. So it's not tier 1 either. I was really wondering, should I put it on tier 2? And then I saw it actually topped the VGCS. So let's say it's bottom of tier 1.5 for now. And finally, Dimensional Robos. Now, we haven't seen this deck do a lot. The fact that it doesn't care whether it starts or goes second makes it very consistent. And some of the plays they can do are so, so, so disgusting. So I will put it at 1.5, but I could definitely see why some people would put it at tier 2. Then tier 2 in no particular order. First off, Aqua Force, Blue Wave and Savas. I think these are kind of tied, even though one might be better in some matchups than the other. Um, they're pretty equal, just do different things a little bit differently. Then we have Pale Moon Harry, basically a lesser version of Night Rose, less consistent, less good overall sadly, but can do some of the same tricks and so it's not a terrible deck like the tier 3 ones we'll be going over, um, but they do need some help. Same with Aqua Force Tavas, I'm a Tavas player so I might be biased. Then we have Neo Nectar, uh, probably Asha, also maybe Musketeer, we saw one top of that in uh, Luxembourg, but yeah, Neo Nectar just really needs some help. Next up, Great Nature. Great Nature just really misses some stuff. I'm also a Great Nature player, so again, I might be biased, but they're not that amazing right now. They can steal some games, they have a mild rush, they can get any Great 3 they want with Mike, but it's just not enough. They lose so hard to Hand Trap. 
and they really need their rear guards to do anything. They don't have any fetch. They have traveling Momonga, but it doesn't f uh, work well together with Maltese and so forth. So Great Nature just needs some stuff. Both the Big Belly and the Chanoir versions. Honorary Prof also really needs something to make their engine run smoother and more consistently so for now great nature tier 2 same with gold paladins i don't know what it is about gold paladins they can obviously fetch quite a lot but they never really have anything any amazing closing power they have the one stride we all know it but it's just not good enough then we have genesis amaruda the problem with this deck right now is that it's just new it misses too much but maybe in the future it will get some nice buffs Finally, Angel Feather Rescue. Issue with Angel Feather is that it can deck out quite quickly. That's basically it. You either win or you deck out. It also doesn't have a very good early game. It doesn't have a disgustingly good first stride. And yeah, it just misses some stuff. Finally, Tier 3. The guys who really, really can get some support uh, from Bushi. We have Mega Colony. Even though some people might be taken off guard by this deck when they go into Opterandus and so forth, the deck really just needs some more stuff to become really, really punishing. Then Murakumo. Now, I do see a lot of Yasuie fans, so... I guess the deck can be alright, but overall they just haven't had enough support to really do anything. Same with Cosmic Heroes. They had their Trinity Dragon moment, but they still really need a lot. And then finally, Maelstrom. I'm just adding this. I am not a big Maelstrom fan, but I can see that the deck is pretty much dead. Same with Revengers. Same with Beast DD and so many other of those lesser subclans. Finally, before set 12, Oracle Think Tank would have been part of this so hard. It would be at the bottom of the tier 3 list. And one set turned that around. So if you're one of those people that currently owns a tier 3 deck, just know that one day Bushi will randomly make one set and change everything. We've got the Zoo Nation booster coming up. So maybe Mega Colony will even become a tier 1 deck. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and leave a like. It helps out so much. And what helps even more is getting an exclusive playmat design made at the Facebook link in the description. If I forgot any clan or sub clan you love, I am so sorry. Let me know what you think in the comments. Perhaps I got something wrong in your opinion. And I'll do my best to do better in the next episode of Tier List with Solemn. Ciao!